In 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7, it says, Every man according as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly, or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. This came about this summer when our offerings weren't doing as well. God started working on my heart. He says, you need to give more. I'm like, okay, well, how much? Well, that answer didn't come right away. And then uh, when it finally, God finally struck me one day when I was sitting there going through some of my finances, he says, you need to give this much. I'm like, wow, because it was like 50% over 50% more of what I was already giving. I just sit there and I'm like, okay. I'm like, I'll give it, God, because this is what you want me to give. I said, but I don't want to give it grudgingly or out of necessity. I said, I'm going to give this because you want me to, but I want to do it with a cheerful heart. Well, that means God's going to have to prove to me, hey, you can give this much and I'm going to take care of you. So obviously the first week went by, no problem. After about three weeks or something like that, I was realizing, hey, I can give this. I have no problem giving this much. Everything's still being met. I make okay money, and I'm like, man, all my bills are still getting paid. I'm still giving this much. I'm like, this is a huge blessing. And right there, God said, see, you're giving because I wanted to, to. Now I'm going to change your heart. And now I'm glad I can give that much. Now he didn't say how long I was going to give this much because I work construction. And sometimes I'm working, as many of the staff can tell you, and sometimes I'm not. And when I'm work, not working, I don't have a whole lot of income. But God has always taken care of me. Uh, I, when I read this verse, I often think of when I was a little boy, four or five years ago, but uh, when I was a little boy, about seven or eight years old, there was a guy in our church that I grew up in. Um, I grew up out in um, Casper, Wyoming, and there was a man, <clears throat> same kind of thing happened in our church where, you know, we said, okay, uh, we're getting ready to do our new budget, and they preached on some giving and stuff, and he was, he made pretty decent money, and God, uh, God told him, him to give X amount of money, and at first he was okay with it, but uh, after a while, he started getting a little bitter about it, was giving it grudgingly, and I slowly watched this man just go downhill, uh, and he made really good money. That was the thing. Not that the church needed his tithe and offering, because, you know, God will take care of his church also, but it... it it affected him, it affected his family, his kids. And the next thing I know, he's not showing up to church every once in a while. And then the next thing I, about a year or two later, he's not even going to church at all. Still in the area, just never going to church. I looked at that, nobody ever taught me, and nobody ever told me to look at that and learn, you should give cheerfully. But I learned as a little boy, I'm like, you know, I'm seven or eight. <laughs> What do I have? My pockets are all empty, you know? But I did learn then that you should be a cheerful giver. And even through this point in time, uh, when God spoke to me, hey, give more, I'm like, okay, God, but I want to do it cheerfully because I've seen the results of not giving cheerfully. I've seen the results of giving grudgingly. Now, in the past, have I given grudgingly? Oh, yeah. I'm just human, just like the rest of you. But, uh, when I give with a cheerful heart, God always seems to bless uh, extraordinarily in many different ways. And blessings just aren't money. It could be health. It could be keeping your car running when it's ready to fall apart. But God does bless us.